Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast, Young Blonde Suburban. I'm your host, Caitlin Files. I'm a young, white, female-identifying lawyer who lives in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, outside of Philly. This podcast runs as a sister show to Young Black Suburban, hosted by Tim Witherspoon Jr. The Young Suburban podcast hosts guests to engage in conversation about their different life journeys and perspectives. My show, Young Blonde, has a special focus on badass babes out there doing the damn thing. So welcome and thank you for tuning in. Let's jump into today's episode. All right, everyone. Welcome to Young Blonde Suburban. Today we have Andrea Gronsky with us. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you. It's so nice to meet you. We've only been hanging out for the last five minutes, but I already like your vibe. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I try to vibe high, so you thank are you. vibing right high. I love it. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Sure. So, um, you know, on this podcast, we have a lot of diverse guests and. Today, we've had a little bit of a focus on women in the nutrition and the health fields. Um, We had a nutritionist earlier, and we had a gym owner right before you. Um, So today, I'm so excited to have you kind of round us out as our third guest today. Mm -hmm. And you are a local karate gym owner, correct? Yes, yes I am. All right. So before we get to that, Mm -hmm. let's talk about your story. Where are you from? So I'm from Ben Salem, born there, grew up there, still there 42 years later. Yeah, so... um, Super boring backstory. Married, I have three kids. That's pretty much me. <laughs> I always tell people, I'm like, I'm just like a slice of white bread. Like it's just, it's just a boring little backstory. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I like I, I went to St. Joe's for both uh, undergrad and grad school, okay. so I had my master's in psychology. I was a family therapist before I ventured into this whole. Wait, world. this is a cool backstory. Why yeah. didn't we just act like you didn't have a cool backstory? This let's back boring. up a second. It's... No, no, <laughs> I like this story. Okay, okay all right. So let's back, back up. up. So you were a hawk. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And you went to St. Joe's for undergrad and grad school. Yes. What did you study when you were in undergrad? Criminal justice. Okay. Wow. Yes. Okay, cool. I hated it because I'm like, why? I'm not going to be a police officer. I'm 5'2". Yeah. Like, no one's... And I was painfully shy, too. So Interesting. I was, yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, that that's a whole other story. So um, I went there for undergrad, for grad school. I did psychology. I ended up at a local non-profit mental health agency in the area. Awesome. I was there for 16 years. 16 years? 16 years. Good. So Wow. Yes. So kind of like fell out of love with that because it's a lot of paperwork. It's, that's a tough job. It's super tough. Um, and then just kind of fell into the world of karate because mm-hmm. of my oldest daughter. Um, loved it. And we opened up our own school. So okay, I want to unpack a yes, lot of that. I, yes, that so was I just awesome. dumped a lot. So <laughs> yes, I'll unpack it. Unpack I love it. Like, I don't have a cool story. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. Yes, you do. Okay, so the psychology, and then did you know what you wanted to do with the psychology? I had that very naive. I want to help people. You oh, know? don't we all have that exactly. lovely, naive feeling? <laughs> exactly. Like, I just want to save the world. I want to help people. I want to work with kids. Mm-hmm. So from high school on, I knew in some way I wanted to work with kids. So I don't know where the criminal justice came. I think it was just cool at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they let high schoolers, like, pick their, their track in life. We like, that's were just, just talking about this in an earlier podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, they expect us to know at 18, 20, 22 what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And that's absurd. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, you know... I, it gave me, I think, the path I needed to end up where I mm-hmm. am now. So I um, chose criminal justice. I minored in psychology for undergrad. And I was like, you know, I think I want to go more this way. So grad school, I did that, got out, got this job. I landed while I was still in grad school and was there 16 years. Were you working with children when you were doing yes, that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So always, always with children. Um, they were at risk for out-of-home mm-hmm. placement. So it was like the severest mental health kids in the area. And... I and mean, it's draining. It's I was going to say, God stories. bless you. Sixteen years of that. Sixteen years. And it was you were at a nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. So the last uh, seven years, I spent in the office. I was the director of the program, mm-hmm. so that I was supervising ten different therapists, and that's even more draining mm-hmm. because yeah. they unpack all of their stuff on you, and you know, just trying to make the sure therapist everyone's to the therapist. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yes. So, and that's kind of where I. I so, okay. So my oldest is almost 17. Mm-hmm. When she was eight, she was being bullied. And I was like, I have to do something here. Like, I can't, I need my daughter to be able to stand up for herself, to be empowered, mm-hmm. not to take crap from anyone. So exactly. we got her into the karate world. Um, so it was right around this time where I was starting to feel a little lost in my career because, again, why they let high schoolers decide what they want to do with their future is beyond me. Right. So <laughs> starting to feel a little lost. And then went into, I started training myself. 
And then, you know, next thing I know, I'm opening a school. So <laughs> so is it fair to say it wasn't necessarily the psychology that drew you, but it was helping yes. kids kind of almost find their way yes. is what was, spoke to you? Yes. Okay. So you kind of, I mean, you worked 16 years in this field, which mm-hmm. is, by the way, amazing work. Thank like, you. Like, that's astounding. And to last that long. Yes. I mean, people burn out after a couple years. Yes. I can't believe you're there 16 years. That's amazing. Thank you. Um. But you realize that your real true calling was essentially empowerment, like you said, yes. for younger for young kids. Yes. Um, and it came from your daughter. Yes. Okay. And she was how old when she was getting bullied? She was eight. That is <laughs> gut wrenching. So, yes. So we sent her to a private school. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you know you think sending to a private school they're going to get the best of you, everything. Really common misconception. I of private know. schools. <laughs> I know. I learned. Um, so like we this little girl was picking on her nonstop mm-hmm. and they didn't want to label it because they didn't want to and the last straw is gym mm-hmm. class this little girl jumps on her takes her shoes off throws them across the gym and like essentially beats her up and I'm like oh no I'm done I was down at the school mama bear like yelling like yeah. this is ridiculous my husband's a police officer and he's like you know what this little girl touches her again, you're going to have some issues here. He's like, this is not okay. My daughter will fight back. Yeah. So. Bullying. Ugh. We pulled her. Yeah. Got her involved in karate. And I haven't looked back since. She is the strongest little girl I know, though, I will tell you. She's amazing. Honestly, bu- I mean, bullying is a terrible thing. Yes. But it really, the kids who, you know, are able to get out of it yes. are really resilient afterward. I mean, it's terrible. Yes. Horrible. Especially nowadays with the cyber bullying and whatnot. Yes. Um, that's a brutal story, oh, but yes. is she, is she still into karate? Your yes. Daughter? Yes. So she is a second degree black belt. She teaches there are different degrees of, ba- so yes. I know nothing about karate. <laughs> yes, there are. It kind of goes on forever. Different styles, <laughs> different belts. So she's been training. Second degree. Yes. Black belt. She's amazing. That's she, yeah, she trains with Tim as well. So she is okay. absolutely amazing. And when we say Tim, um, we're talking about Tim Witherspoon, yes. who, Tim Witherspoon Jr., <laughs> <laughs> who is the host of Young Black Suburban. Sorry, I had to give him his no, plug that's there. okay. Yes, he definitely deserves it. So she is just the toughest little girl, like full of comments. She's quiet, mm-hmm. but she's one of these, like, don't mess with her because she's she's been through some stuff and yeah. she's going to stand up for herself. Good for her. Yes. I love that. That sounds awesome. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to kind of your journey now. Okay. So your daughter's going through the bullying. Yes. Um, and you said she got into karate, but you also got into karate? Yes. So just from taking her, the head instructor there is like, hey, did you ever think about training? And of course, you know, us women have so much pressure put on us from society. I'm like, I don't have time. Like, you're out of your mind. I'm yeah. working full time. I have three kids. My youngest was in the car seat. She was so little at that point. My husband has a crazy work schedule. There's no way at all I'm going to be able to find the time to train. Well, they beat me down a little bit, and I started <laughs> training. Um, I started training at that point. My husband started training. My middle daughter started training. Oh, my God. Yes. And then when my youngest was two, she started Mommy and Me. So we there were There are all, Mommy and Me karate oh classes? Goodness, it's just the cutest thing. Like, their uniforms are this big. Oh, it's adorable. It. It's absolutely so adorable. And then at that point, I started teaching because I was there all the time. And I'm like, you know, my kids are here. I might as well help out on the yeah. mats. So that's where my love of teaching started. That's so great. And yes. you were still working full time yes. at this nonprofit mental yes. health. Yes. <sighs> when they say that, like moms can just <laughs> juggle and do so much, mm-hmm. this is why moms should be running the world I agree. because you can do so many things. I agree. And excel at all of them. <laughs> yes, keep your mental health. We try. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. So, how long did you train for before you kind of were like, I think I want to. Get a fuck so, or at a karate gym. So it's so funny with that. So I was just going a couple of days a week teaching, and the head instructor who um, actually owns all of the, the he's the founder of my school, uh, of all the schools in the area who are under this name. Um, he's like, hey, did you ever think about doing this full time? And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I'm too busy. I can't do this. You know, we make excuses for of ourselves. Course, we get in our yeah. own way of accomplishing our goals. And it's not the path that you yes. have written for yourself. Yeah, it's like, that's not what my master's is in. Like, I had that exactly. shiny master's hanging on my wall. Mm-hmm. So this was probably about a six-month conversation that we had. Wow. And then, you know, I sat down with my family because it's a big change for my girls. Absolutely. Like, I'm not going to be home at night now. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone was supportive. And then I made the plunge. So I, I worked locally in Feasterville um, for about two years. Okay. And then the opportunity came up for me to branch out and open my own. And that was three years ago. 
So I'm obsessed with your story. Okay. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so this, so you were training at one of, and this is action karate. Yes. Correct? It's an action karate. Okay. And they franchise the karate yes. businesses and you were at the Feasterville Trevos yes. one training. Yes. Okay. And the guy who runs the whole yes. show yes. is the one who was like, we want you to basically open a business. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. So the co-founders, <laughs> like they're the, the coolest people. So it's, it's two of them and mm-hmm. they were just, they saw something in me, I guess. Mm-hmm. And that's where we are. That's so, amazing. Thank you. So the opportunity, so how does that happen? Like, was it someone, because you're in Drexel Hill? Yes. Okay. So you, and for people who don't know that, it's not a Bucks County area. That's no. why you don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's more, I would call it the Western suburbs of Philadelphia. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so how did that, was it like we have a new space or was it an existing business that someone was leaving? It was a new space that they found. Okay. Um, it's an old movie theater, which is really cool. It That's was very cool. Yes. So it was built in the 1920s. Mm-hmm. I swear it's haunted. It's like the coolest <laughs> building ever. They found it. It's we should have some this... Halloween parties there for oh the gym. We really should. It'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> so they found it, and we're right outside of West Philly, too. So the demographics is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so they found it, and <laughs> right around the time they found it, um, so this is like a whole other little detour for my story it's here. all right. We love the detours. <laughs> Take us on the detour. I wrote on the detour. <laughs> so they found this building in May of 2018. And there were some issues with the seller. So we were back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. July of the same year, um, my husband had some weird medical issues. All of a sudden, he lost feeling in his legs. Um, we oh, didn't God. know what was going on. Um, was in the hospital. They couldn't figure out what was happening. He could not walk. So when I'm walking into the hospital, not knowing, like, is my husband ever going to walk again? What's happening? And, you know, my head instructor calls and he says, um, they accepted our bid. The school's yours. What do you want to do? I know Jerry's in the Gosh. hospital with no idea what's happening. What do you want to do? So I walk into my husband's hospital room and I'm like, so, you know, <laughs> got him on the phone. What are we doing? He's like, this is our goal. Go, go for it. Like, I don't know what the future is going to hold, um, but this is our time. Like, you know, we're always, we're so cautious. We're so afraid to take the leap. Mm-hmm. This is the time to do it. Yeah. So we did, my husband had a spinal stroke is what happened. So he had quite the recovery as well. Yeah. As I'm opening the new business, he's in rehab and he's trying to learn to walk again. Oh and so and how many was, kids do you have at I have home? three. Okay. So my oldest is 16, 12, and then eight. Always in the background. You're saying all the stuff, but also, <laughs> by the way, there are three also children. Also, by the way. <laughs> yes. So it definitely has been a very interesting journey in starting this business. It was not an easy start because yeah. um, he's in the hospital. I'm trying to balance, like, is he going to walk again? Mm-hmm. Oh, here's my three children. Yes. Oh, I have to. I have to keep them alive. And yes. <laughs> yes. Help them thrive. But also, this is a new business. Brand it's new. not like you were taking over an existing business. Correct. So you had to build it. Yes. You are... <laughs> resilient <laughs> thank you wow <laughs> thank you okay so that was in like the summer 2018 yes okay so they get they get the bid for the building mm-hmm. and then what do you actually have to do like what's your responsibilities as a new gym owner do you have to do they like set it up for you do they get all the equipment and everything you need or I don't no. do you need equipment yes. like, I don't even know <laughs> I've never taken a karate class so so because this building um was so old they had to do a build out so all the construction's happening and it's my job to go find some new students so not only do I run the, I teach every single class as well so I'm getting the students enrolling the students teaching all the classes setting it up like just making sure you're building the so even though it's yes. part of a franchise you are building a yes. brand new business yes it was okay. my responsibility to go market go okay. sell myself so here I am you know a, a the woman basically in this community I don't know being like, mm-hmm. hey, trust me enough to come send your kid to me and let me teach them karate. And that that's a very humbling experience. Yeah. You know, because and it's a everything. very male dominated yes. teaching field. It is. It really I yes. wasn't sure if you're gonna walk in here and tell me you just own the gym or if you also practice karate. Yes. Um that's amazing. Good Thank for you. you. And it's so funny because people love that when they walk in and they're like, mm-hmm. Oh wait, so you're the instructor and you're a woman and I'm not very big and I'm like, no, no you're I'm tiny. I'm, mm-hmm. Um, but they, I, I've only had one ever question me like, Oh, 
a man doesn't own this and rolled his kid anyway. So I won him over apparently. Right. But... And you're like hair flip. No, it's me. Exactly. <laughs> and I will take you down if I need to. No. <laughs> Let me show you my black belt. Exactly. <laughs> it was earned. <laughs> so what level are you at? I'm a second degree as well. Okay. Yes. Okay, I don't know what that means, but it scares me. <laughs> it feels like you can kill me with your hair. Oh my hands. goodness, no. <laughs> well, this is so awesome. Okay, so how, tell me about like, how did you grow it? I mean, were you on social media? Were you hitting the pavement? Like, how did you do all it? All of it. All of it. All of it. So, Facebook was my, Facebook and Instagram, they were like my best mm-hmm. friends, and they still are. Um, but oh, just yeah, getting, I was going like, on your Instagram. I mm-hmm. loved it. Thank you. It's great. I'm not as good as Instagram. I feel like I need my daughter to take that over for mm-hmm. me because that's like a, a young kid thing in my mind. But we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the, just out on the pavement, out in the community, introducing mm-hmm. myself to other business owners, awesome. talking to the schools, talking to the daycares, just getting out yeah. in the community, community events. Um, so yeah, and we grew. That's a hustle. Yes. Now in the beginning, I'm assuming your husband couldn't even help you. Correct. He was, did he have to relearn how to walk? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. That's insane. Yes. And he, I mean, he's a very proud man. So mm-hmm. that was very difficult oh, for him yeah. to be like, why well, can't, and he's in the police force. So why now I'm yeah. you know, bedridden. So he was in a wheelchair, um, and then a walker and then a cane and he's got a little limp now, but you never know. Okay. So he's pretty resilient too. So you were basically out there doing this yes. on your own. Yes. Okay. And how old were your kids at the time? So three years ago, 13, I can't do math apparently today. Either. Under the age of 13. Under the age of 13. <laughs> Still need adult supervision. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So how were they coming with you? I just, I'm trying to figure out how you balanced all of this. So I am so very lucky to have family. Okay. My parents and my grandparents are in the same area as me. Awesome. So my parents still to this day, I can call them and say, hey, can you go take this one to um, her activity, that one to her activity? And they do. So my oldest, however, will come with me. She, she's my little assistant instructor. Mm -hmm. So she would come and help me with everything because with construction, there'd be dust everywhere. So we would have to clean everything, set up for class, take everything Mm -hmm. down. Um, so yeah, it was, it's definitely a family business. Yeah. So it sounds like it. Yes. How did you feel making that jump from a solid job Mm -hmm. to essentially something you have to create with a family? I, I probably cried every day to be honest. But you, I'm glad you shared that because people think it's just like, yeah, and then I did this. And no, I probably cried every day. I probably questioned, was this the right move mm-hmm. for me every single day? Because it's, you know, I'm going from, you know, the world of mental health to then I, you know, running a, a steady school paycheck. that was already established to now, wow, like, and starting a business are not cheap. So now it's business loan after business loan. It's like, did I do the right thing? Mm-hmm. But I, I use all that stress and all that anxiety to really make me go forward. Right. You know, like that, that's what I use to fuel myself. Like this, I have to get this done. I have too many people depending on me. And I want my girls to see, like, you can do this. Mm-hmm. Like you can do anything at all you put your mind to. And it's never too late to start again. Like here I was in my late thirties, like, oh, hey, guess what? We're starting a business. So I wanted them to see like anything is possible. Yeah. So that is really my driving force there. And it's amazing because you, you're you right. It is never too late to yes. continue to keep finding yourself. Yes. And it's, it seems like you have found who you really are in this karate business. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. And your three kids, are they all girls? Yes, all girls. I love that because now they're <laughs> watching their badass mom literally take this leap into nothing yes. and create something that makes her truly happy. Yes. And create a business which is yes. very important it's not just being a female owner but also something that makes you happy and finding yourself yes definitely oh my gosh I love your story this thank is you. so fantastic thank you <laughs> so when you tell me a little bit about like what the life kind of change looks like for you because it's very different I mean now you're in charge it's 24 7 job for yes business. yes um, how have you been able to manage that with the change of like having just what I'm assuming you were nine to five maybe before. So yes, yeah, so while I was in mental health, it was nine to five. Mm-hmm. And then when I started running the school in Feasterville, then it was morning hours to do like all the business end of stuff and right. then class hours. So now it's pretty much, you know, I'm at my school, I'm at my physical location five days a week, but I'm working constantly because calls come in and then, Oh, Hey, I have this random paperwork I have to do. And then, Oh, it's payroll. Like there's so many things that go into making these businesses work. So it is, it's constant. I try really hard to put boundaries around my family time. 
And so Sundays, I try really, really hard not to do anything work related. That's all. Gym closed on Sundays. It is. Okay. Um, it's Sundays and Mondays, and I'm holding tight to that because like I need that. Like my Mm -hmm. girls are still young, so I need to show them that they are my priority. They are why I do everything I do. So to kind of wrap that little bubble around them. Mm Self care is so super important as well. Yes, it is. So Sunday mornings, that's my self care time. Mm-hmm. I do my yoga class. I meditate. That's just me time before they get up and our day starts. So I think having those boundaries, but also being flexible with my time too. Like if I don't get laundry done, okay, it'll be there the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, so letting go of some expectations that I feel like society puts on us too, as women, that we have to, yes, you know. Do. And so letting go of some of that and just really, truly focusing on what's important in this moment. Tomorrow it might change. Like I might have a different priority, but my family life never changes. Mm -hmm. So that's always my number one. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you. So have the, I'm sure when you went to go open the gym, Mm -hmm. um, you kind of had a vision or an idea of what it would be like for the next couple of years or whatnot, opening it. Has it? Ben, how you expected it? Opening no. the job? COVID. COVID threw <laughs> everything. <laughs> I forgot about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> COVID threw everything off. We're fully back, so we don't yes. have our masks on, so yes. I totally forgot fully about it. Here. <laughs> this actually feels, this is the first time I'm like. It's a little normal, right? It's fantastic. <laughs> yes. I know. So exciting. Um, yes, not at all. So, you know, with any new business, there were some mistakes made. Mm-hmm. Um, of course. Yeah. That's so That's how it, you learn and grow. Exactly. Um, and it, when COVID hit, I really thought my business was going to be done, to be honest with you, because how can a karate school function? Gyms got hit really hard. Yes. I mean, you guys can't, it's not like how with the restaurants, of course got hit hard, yes. but you can at least deliver food. Yes. I don't, gyms are like, nope. <laughs> so, well, the phenomenal masterminds of the Action Karate Organization, as the day we closed started Zoom classes. They're like, this is what we have to do to move forward. Mm -hmm. So we did take a hit, but not as bad as some of these other schools. Like, I am so grateful. My doors are so open, and we are stronger now than we were pre-COVID. You were doing virtual classes? Virtual classes. Oh, okay. So I was teaching from my living room. My dog and my cat would make, you know, grand appearances in our our (laughs) videos, but we got through. And, you know, then we started teaching outside classes, and my community really rallied around us, my little karate community, and they were determined to see us stay open um and you know we're we're here and we're stronger than ever i think that's do a lot with the energy that you put out because when your community is rallying around you it's because they respect you and they want us to make sure that you make it through and that's so awesome that you have built this community where you're not from i mean drexel hill is a foreign place to you yes you're a ben salem girl yes i mean you have a hike 45 minutes to get to and from so it's really awesome that in what two years you were able to establish this community not even two years because covid hit what was like a year and a half year and a half yes so your community still came in and supported you yes that's so awesome and if you actually look on your instagram because that's all i knew about you Mm -hmm. is i went onto your instagram to like check out what's a karate (laughs) about but like it, you can see how community based it is. Yes, and it's very. It also looks very diverse, which is great. Yeah, because it seems like you are a very inclusive environment for people, yes. which is very important for gyms to be. I think it really is, and I think. So all of my students know I love them all. Mm-hmm. I truly love them. I'm very genuine in my approach with them. Um, and I think that's what the families know too. Like I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it because I truly want to help these little people. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to give them the opportunities. I want them to be empowered, to have that confidence. Um, and I think they understand that. Yeah. So you do you give off a very genuine and compassionate vibe which isn't really always what you would imagine a gym owner to give off. You feel like you're more going to get this like intense hustle, like yes, positive, positive, positive vibe, which is great. <laughs> Love it. People right. do that. But you almost feel like a warm hug walking in the door. <laughs> and it's really nice because you. you don't really expect that with a gym owner. Right. That's and so it's, sweet. Thank you. It, it, it's just how I feel. Jordan, do you feel it too? Do you feel that warm hug? Our producer's <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> But it makes me want to go try karate. I've never been interested in karate in my life. Are you? Oh my gosh. So I'm awesome. like a little bit nervous to be in this room right now. Jordan, if you're going to hear him, says he has a black belt in Taekwondo. So I can do nothing. I can go on a run. That's about my skill. But it is. You do. You have this very welcoming vibe to you. Um, 
Is that, do people kind of reiterate that back to you when they keep coming, do they? Yes. Yeah. I, I think that's a therapist in me, honestly. It's got to be. Because people tell me that the most personal things, and they'll say to me, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but <laughs> I'm like, oh, you can tell me anything you want. Like, yeah. that's, you know, so I, I do think it's a therapist in me. And I think that set me up for where I am today. It, it pro- uh, yeah, mm-hmm. to build on that, and to, you are almost like a different kind of gym owner. Yes. And it's very... It's almost like a therapy mixed with a physical yes. workout, which is nice. And a lot of people go to gyms to act as mental therapy. It helps them work through things. Yes. So sit there and gab to you at the same time while also yes. taking classes. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about karate. Okay. I know nothing about it okay. at all. Um, so you got into it. Why, like, why, what was it about karate that just really connected with you? So I fought them on training. I'm going to be very honest with you. It probably took them maybe two years to convince me to come on the mats. Because um, I'm like, I don't have time. Two years. Two years. Wow. They were in it for the long haul. They you. really were. <laughs> they, God bless them. They knew. Um, so I, it didn't appeal to me at first. Because I'm mm-hmm. like, oh no. Like this, this, is, this is up for boys. Like I don't want to do this. It is. It's a, yes. You think karate, you think male. You yes. just do. And I'm not trying to bash on karate. No. Though. I don't think no. karate did it that way. But right. you just, at least in America, you think Yes. You think men? Yes. Even though my daughter was in it because I wanted those you life see skills. little girls yes. in it. I don't know why I just associate it with men. Right. But I'm like, I'm a grown woman. Like, not yeah. really. But the more I sat there and I saw the community that they were building, and mm-hmm. it, it is, it's truly a family at our schools. I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll try this out. So I just fell in love with Like, I love working out. I fell in love with it, but it is that sense of camaraderie on the mats. Mm. So then all I did was talk about karate. I only hung out with karate people. Like, they were my people. Yeah. Um, so that's, I just fell in love with it. And we're not a fighting school. Like, my goal is, again, that confidence, those life skills that come with it. I want you to be able to stand up for yourself and defend yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to pick a fight. I'm not going to, like, challenge anyone to a fight. It's I'm going to protect myself and my family. And that's the goal of karate in addition to all those life skills do they do practice fights in your karate gym so we have sparring we okay. definitely have sparring. that's, that's the yes worst. <laughs> yes not right now of course with covid but it's it's more just putting everything into practice okay and so. like the chopping of the like i think karate i think chopping a board that's like, like a special <laughs> occasion yes i can break boards but can you <laughs> yeah. see this is why i'm like nervous oh my god oh my break boards. that's crazy <laughs> and what are the okay so black belt obviously yes. Like, what are, how many belts are there before? This, this is, is something people can Google, but I do not know. That's okay. Answer. I will answer. So in our style, there's 10 belts okay. before you get to your black belt. What do you mean your style? So there's, there's different, different styles. styles. Stop so it. like Jordan said, he has Taekwondo. So okay. our style is Kempo. So we're American Kempo. But there's so many different styles. There's like styles I can't even say. So there's so many different styles out there. What's different about American Kempo? Like what? I don't know. And so our... our it's our founder, um, Ed Parker, Ed Parker Jr. It's what he did with it okay. when he brought it over to America and just... It's just different it's from just different. something, different yes. techniques. Different techniques. We call things differently. Um, we might... Like some schools are more fighting schools than our school. So... Okay. It's very, very different depending on the school, their, their thought process, their style. So you had to go through 10 belts to get to Black Belt. Correct. Is that normal? I feel like there's only like six. Depends. It depends okay. on the school. But so you did a lot. Yes. Oh my gosh. And now you're at, how like, what's master? Like. So there are 10 black belts. Oh my I gosh. I will never see that because in between each belt, that's how many years it takes to get there. So I'll be like a hundred and some years old. So obviously I'm never going to get there. I see. So. Okay. But... Okay. So you have to start young yes. to get to yes. master black yes and you're never done learning like that's mm-hmm. the thing with karate it, you're always a student you're always learning that's our goal like even being a head instructor i still train i go to our feasterville school and i train weekly because that's we're always always learning and developing it, it's constant and never-ending improvement mm-hmm. is what we strive for right so is this totally run by you? Does your husband help at all? Or is this like, this is you and your baby? So this is my baby. He is one of my assistant instructors, though, because he doesn't have a choice. Just the assistant. Yes. Yes. He doesn't. Have, <laughs> that's what he I let him come. He's like the boss, the boss over there. Um, no, he is so supportive. That's awesome. But this is my thing. And he's a second degree black belt as well. Um, but this is. Your family. We are a family of black belts. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's yes. pretty cool. Yes. 
It is. It's, it's very cool that we have this activity that we do together. And a like an intense one. Like, yes. You can protect yourself. Yes. Which is really important for women, especially, to be able to have some sort of self-defense. Yes. Um, I've also... I've never taken a self-defense class, and I always think about, I'm going to regret this so much one day that I need to take some sort of self-defense. I'm, like, screaming in my head at you right now. I okay. know. So let me tell you. You look let so me... calm, and I'm <laughs> waiting for you to erupt. <laughs> we were carjacked, okay? Mm-hmm. We were carjacked coming home from karate. So in Feasterville, we were carjacked. Um, my husband put him to the ground. And, you know, I always think to myself, what would I have done? And I would have reacted as well. Thank God there was no weapon there, but he took him down. Um, there was another time I was, run- I was running. You said you're a runner, so you mm-hmm. need to be very, very careful. Yes. Running in my neighborhood, same place I run all the time. Someone stopped. And right away, get away. Like yeah. that, those instincts, again, I've never had to physically defend myself, mm-hmm. but everyone should know it's like situational awareness. Absolutely. Uh, like it's so important for women to know. Um, yes. And another time at the zoo, I'm walking in that parking garage with my three girls, just oh, me and them. parking garage literally makes me mm-hmm. sick to my stomach. Mm-hmm. Homeless guy comes up to us, put myself right in between him and my girls. I'm like, you need to back up. Yeah. So it's things like that that I don't know that I would have been able to do if I didn't have the confidence behind it. Yeah. You know, so. That is so important. And I think yes. it's something that women, like, push to the side. I'll yes. get to it. I'll think about it later. Yes. Parking garages. I went to law school, and you learned so many horrific cases Mm -hmm. of what happens in parking garages and dark parking lots Mm -hmm. and it's it's terrifying and I still can't believe even learning all that stuff I still haven't had self-defense but I had an incident in Philadelphia I used to live down a very small street Mm -hmm. um and it was it was very you know it was very busy during the day I felt very safe and I had a guy follow me home and try to get into my house one night. How frightening. Oh it was goodness. terrifying. Mm-hmm. And luckily, you know, I said I was calling the police. And I didn't even end up dialing because my hands were shaking so hard. But he mm-hmm. thought I was. So he ran off. Um, but it was something like that. Again, I have no self-defense. I would have, I like didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is something where I think if I were trained immediately, because it is like, it, it's, you're just, it's your gut reaction of what you're going to do. You yes. really don't think. Correct. And if you're trained on it, it would almost be your immediate response to have that self-defense kick in. Because yes. I was just like screaming. I was like, ah, someone help. Like, right. it was so creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is so important for girls to have some sort of self-defense training. And yes. it's not common. Not no. a lot of us have it. No. And that's what's so scary. And unfortunately, we're raised to be nice, mm-hmm. you know, and not to hurt anyone's feelings. Yeah. So that's something else I think of, too. Like, if this, if these people come up to us in the garage, we don't want to make a scene. We don't want to hurt their exactly. feelings. We need to make a scene. We drives me nuts when I see on social media, you know, I was in coal shopping, and someone came up to me, and I'm so scared, and I didn't say anything. Why didn't you say anything? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you alert somebody that there's this creep around? So I think everyone needs self-defense classes like yeah. some type of a brand. what would you do and hopefully we never have to use it like our life insurance hopefully we never have to use yeah. life insurance <laughs> you know but like this these are things that we need to do to be mm-hmm. able to protect ourselves because god forbid that guy was like i don't care you're calling the police and, yeah exactly you know? and like we are conditioned to not make it's yes. more like to be like well i wasn't sure what he was doing so i didn't want to make him feel weird like yeah. i <clears throat> want to make sure i'm not making him feel weird or awkward correct we are conditioned yes. that way and here's the thing any normal person would not approach a woman like that in the parking no. garage anyway. So there's something he should be made to feel weird if he's coming up to us like that. So yeah. I don't. I, we have to stop caring about hurting other people's feelings and worry about protecting ourselves. And I love it's. It's. I think it's. I think it's changing. I yes. do think the way that our girls are being raised yes. now. I mean, look at you, a mom of three girls, mm-hmm. and you're raising them to be, you know, strong mm-hmm. and take care of themselves yes where i'm not saying we weren't raised that way but it it was definitely i feel like my generation was kind of in a transitional time like it was like we were recognizing it but we still weren't really being taught that yet yes but now your kids generation i mean they're black belts and karate no one's messing with them right and i tell my girls and my students like you use your voice when Mm -hmm. something is not right you speak up you know trust your voice trust your gut you know, worst thing is you'll have to apologize if you're wrong, but that's okay. I'd rather you be wrong than dead. Yeah, be safe. So, yes. So, and I think finding our voice, that that took me very long to do, is to find my voice and to use my voice. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to speak my truth regardless of 
how you feel. Now, I'm not out to hurt anyone's feelings, obviously, but I'm going to use my voice and I'm going to speak my truth and I'm going to use that to make sure the little ones are okay and I'm okay and any woman that I deal with is okay. And I think that's a lot of women and a lot of moms are also learning that, like self-care, putting yourself first so that you can be a better person and find yourself and find your voice and what you're saying. And this is, you know what you, I was thinking when you said you were so painfully shy, Mm -hmm. It just, you just don't come off that way. So it's it's <laughs> it's crazy to see how people evolve and change over yes. their life because you're a karate instructor now. I will never forget when I had to give a speech when I was in mental health in front of all these police officers at the crisis center because we were talking about how to deal with crises with people with mental health. Mm-hmm. I stuttered and stammered the entire time. About maybe three years ago, my um, head instructor said to me, Black Belt, uh, test 500 people there he's like oh you're gonna give a speech today I was like okay and now <laughs> it's in the, I didn't even bat an eye I got up I said my speech and that was that yeah. so it, it is amazing like the progression like I'm, I'm gonna speak what I have to say and yeah it's okay I, mean, I can't believe you stutter and stammered because you've been very articulate <laughs> well thank you <laughs> <You're> like, <"No." laughs> it took a lot of work but do you think karate helped with that definitely like, yeah. definitely I think that's really true with women like the more not like powerful, but the more, you know, you learn something or kind of step out of your comfort zone and realize you're good at something. Yes. And it builds your confidence. Yes. I agree. That's, your story is really cool. It's so funny that you said like, you're like, I have such a boring background. It's not very boring. (laughs) Do you know when it's like your story, you're like, oh, no one wants to Oh, I never tell my story. And then when I start talking, they're like, it's a little bit cooler than I thought it was. And I'm like, it's not to me. Right, because it's, it's your story. Yeah, you know, like, yes. yes. You live it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. So where do you see the karate gym going? What's your plans for it now that we're kind of getting out of COVID now? So long term, I would like to open another location. Look um, at you. You're a hustler. Yes, but it all depends on what my girls want to do. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of like enjoying the growth of our school right now, enjoying where we're at right now, um, just trying to reach more and more in the community that we can. Wow. Um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So. And you like it? You like oh running? God, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... I, well, as soon as I step on the mats, when I ran the Feaster location, I was more in the office. I did like the marketing and the business end. But now mm-hmm. since I'm doing, I do that as well, but all of the teaching, I just, I love it. I love influencing these little lives. And the fact that these kids are so happy when they walk in, they're like, it's Miss Andrea. And they throw themselves at me and, you know, they're just, they're wonderful. So um, I definitely love what I do. I think it's so awesome to, because you clearly, your mission was to impact lives, especially yes. children's lives. And it's important for people to see that that doesn't just have to be through mental health. It doesn't just have to be through teaching, like as in a classroom. Mm -hmm. It can be through pretty much any career or passion that you find, and you just find ways to impact kids. Yes. That's so great. Thank you. It seems like you've found your passion and you're living it now. Yes. Oh, I love it. I definitely never would have thought this 20 years ago, but I couldn't imagine. That's why we shouldn't be making kids make choices in 20 my poor daughter we're looking at colleges right now for her she's like how am I supposed to decide I I know I I know and I can't even argue with her Mm -hmm. and my parents like she needs to go to college I'm like I I don't know what to do right now you know so we're gonna let her find her own journey her own path and and it sounds like she has a supportive family home which is probably the most crucial things for kids not going to college but knowing that you have the support to find your own way yes that's awesome. Yeah, as soon as she takes a little detour, that's okay. We're here yeah. for her. So it sounds like she's got a good head on her shoulders, yes. and she can protect yeah. herself, she as we know. Can. Yes. <laughs> so there's one question I ask everyone on the podcast, mm-hmm. um, and it's, "What is your joy, or what brings you joy?" You can't say your children. <laughs> I try to take the kids out of it because I think everyone would say they're kids. And I want you to tell us a little bit more about what brings you joy in your life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think just the ability to do what I love brings me joy. So knowing that, I mean, it's it's not all a walk in the park. We know that. Um, there have been ups, there have been downs. But at the end of the day, I can say, it, you know, it brings me joy to live the life that I choose to live. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. And you know what? Not everyone can run their own business. People will try to, and mm-hmm. they just don't have what it takes. And it sounds like you have not only found that it's your passion, but you're a business owner. You are yes. like meant to do it, which is so cool. And yes. 
probably not something you saw for yourself, what, 10 years ago, five years ago? Yes, not at all. Oh my goodness, not at all. I've just, I've been very, very lucky. I have Mm -hmm. phenomenal mentors um, who believed in me and this is, they they let me grow, which is amazing. So... Well, I'm sold. I mean, I might be driving over to Drexel Hill. You come down and see me anytime. I think I need to. I mean, I need to learn self-defense. And I would, I honestly, personally, would never, ever, ever, ever have gone to a karate gym because I would have been intimidated because I don't know anything about it. And it would be, I would think it would be all male. And it would just be very intimidating for me. And I am, I'm, I have plenty of confidence, you know, but I still would be intimidated even though I still do work, like still work out and stuff, I I just think your gym is so it's it sounds very inviting. I have more adult women a training than I do men. So anytime you come on, that up. is so. <laughs> yes. I I mm, I'm here for it. I think that's so <laughs> great. I think you need to blast that on your social media because people like me seeing that, mm-hmm. I would I would absolutely hundred percent want to go. I do want to go. I, I want to go train Anytime now. Anytime you come. And mm-hmm. have like a little girls club. Mm-hmm. This sounds fantastic. It is. It's so wonderful. So how do people find you? Um, like, like Instagram, Facebook, oh, email, all website. Of it. All of it. So we're on Facebook, Action Karate Drexel Hill. I'm on Instagram. Same thing. We're on Google. We're all over the place. Okay. So And you guys are actively offering classes right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. We are in person. Um, of course, with all COVID precautions. Of course. I know. But yeah, so we're in person. Okay. And, and you're teaching all the classes? All the classes. And is it broken up? Like there's some kids classes, there's adult classes. So we start at age three. You want to oh talk about gosh. adorable? Oh I might just goodness. come watch. <laughs> oh my goodness. They, their energy is amazing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so we started three. So I have my little guys, my three to six year olds, and my seven to 12 year olds, and my teens and adults. Okay. So. That's so great. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for it was having so me. so nice to meet you. Thank you so and much. And everyone, go check out Action Karate, Drexel Hill, especially my ladies out there. Yes. Thank you. Oh, my God. All right, that was Andrea over at Drexel Hill Action Karate. Um, I could talk about her interview forever. I absolutely loved meeting Andrea. That was my first time I met her. Um, I love that she completely changed course in her career because she was trying to teach her daughter basically how to stand up for herself. And bullying is such a problem, but to have a mom come in there and know that her daughter needs basically to learn how to defend herself and bring her to karate i just i loved her story i it was funny in the beginning when she said she had a boring story because i actually think she has such an interesting story um but i love her mission of just teaching kids how to stand up for themselves and to empower young kids and i mean adults alike it sounds like she has a lot of adults classes and i know she was annoyed at me when i said i've never taken a self-defense class especially having lived in the city for 10 years i really should have um But she was right. Women were raised to try to be nice. And I don't remember ever being asked to go to a self-defense class or being told I need to learn self-defense. And I think it's really important that she's doing that. And she has three young daughters who she's not only teaching self-defense to, but she's also showing them how a strong woman can run her own business and completely change her path in life. At, in a middle age um, after having three kids and her husband was very very sick at the time so I just think she's so resilient and I stand by saying that moms should run the world because they can multitask and do amazing things while half of us are barely doing anything um, I also really liked when she talked about community and she completely left her comfort zone, which is Ben Salem, and went over to Drexel Hill, which is very foreign ground for Bucks County. It's over in the West Philly suburbs. And she's created a pretty tight-knit community in one year alone that stood by her and her business when COVID hit. And you can just feel that radiating out of Andrea when you are when you meet her, um, that she she just feels like a good person. She has good vibes and you want to be part of her community. I feel like she's kind of figured out life, like she's kind of unlocked how to find true happiness. She seems to have 
the career she loves, the family that she takes care of, um, and she's building a strong community and helping others while she's at it. So I really loved her. I loved meeting her. I am probably going to pick up karate now because she's so fantastic. But you can check her out over at Action Karate in Drexel Hill. Um, they do have an Instagram account. You can check them out there as well. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. And don't forget to go check out our brother podcast, Young Black Suburban with Tim Witherspoon.